Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and in this video, we are going to talk about the double summoning event madness going on this weekend, also coinciding with an event, 140 Ancient Shards to get a guaranteed Goffred Brassclad during 2x Ancient. So we're going to talk about this champion in context and let you know how I feel about YOLOing a bunch of shards and if they are worth it or not. And we'll cover some other stuff going on in Raid just to get you caught up to speed as we head in closer to the weekend. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so Goffred is the Magic Affinity Dwarf Legendary right here. Uh, as far as base stats, really solid to get 60 between resistance and accuracy. Um, the 102 base speed is nice. He scales his damage with defense, so 1432 is a pretty solid base defense. The attack is completely irrelevant, obviously, and the HP is a touch low, but, but really not too bad. Then as far as the kit, we've got an A1 attack, one enemy two times. The first hit has the 50% chance of placing a defense down. The second hit, 50% chance of placing a provoke. Multi-hitter defense down and provoke, pretty solid. Then we've got the uh, the A2 here. This is a three turn cooldown, guaranteed 100% stun that scales with defense when fully booked. So this would be absolutely incredible for any content like uh, PVE, you know, Dungeon Waves, or uh, Faction Wars for sure. Uh, and if you can get it off in the arena and they don't have a block buffs or anything, obviously it would be amazing there as well. And then we've got this, uh, this ability here, place increased defense on all allies for two turns. Then remove any defense down or weaken debuff on all allies. We could book it to a three turn cooldown. And then we have a passive here. Whenever an ally is attacked under a block damage buff placed by this champion, has a 75% chance of placing a stun debuff on the attacker. And then we got the active. If an ally is about to get killed by a fatal hit, blocks incoming damage and places a block damage buff on them for one turn. And then we can get the chance of the stun proc up to 100% with booking as well. Now, there's a lot going on here, and that's a pretty amazing ability. It is a cooldown of four turns, which is decently long. But if you're in a defensive tag team arena team or something, you've got a Rotos that's going to run in and kill somebody, boom, we're going to block incoming damage and then place a block damage buff on them for one turn. So you could really use him as a way to keep something alive and be able to go like second, play a defensive style and keep a DPSer alive from a, from a fatal hit, which is going to be really good for like a tag team or a team or something. And then he's got some, some really good cleansing. You placed him in, in, in a defense team you know, Ragash, Valkyrie, things like that, completely wiping away defense down buffs or debuffs, and then also increasing defense. So could be really solid in a tanky defense heavy team. And also uh, with some CC here with the, uh, with the A1 doing provoke and the A2 doing a guaranteed stun. So yeah, all in all, I think he's pretty solid. Um, I don't think he's God tier. Um, I don't think he's account changing, but could he slot into like, a third tag team arena team or really help somebody that hasn't finished the dwarf faction wars yet with the guaranteed stun and the provokes and and cleansing debuffs and making your team more tanky and preventing fatal damage yeah uh keep in mind that the the, the boss of the dwarves does do a lot of uh, fatal damage it can be really hard to three star that content so i do think for for anybody that has not finished faction wars yet for the dwarves he'd be a pretty good option other than that uh, I, I think he's fun. I think he has a role in the game. He's decent. It's not like he's a trash can legendary. I don't know that he'd be like a champion. I'm super excited to YOLO for though. And yeah, that will be going on this weekend, coinciding right here with on Friday, getting the 2X Ancients going on. And we just had a CVC. I should add CVC into this chart because uh, to show where it'll be happening in between, because I think CVC will be like in here. It'll be kind of after next weekend and we'll lead into that next Tuesday. So I should probably add that in here, uh, the expected dates for CVC since we just had that. But yeah, you know, in general, it's never really a bad thing to pull during during ancient shards, especially if you are in the progression phase of your account, don't feel bad about yellowing your 2x ancients. And if you get that bonus champion uh, from pulling 140 shards, why not? But if you are someone who's saving your shards for that special guaranteed legendary event, like they've done some super amazing ones, like they did a guaranteed event 
for Lady Kimmy. If you're in the position where you're saving your shards for a certain guaranteed or a certain 10x, which with ancient shards, I don't really recommend doing because the, the 10x's are really, really hard to, uh, to, to get to proc on, on a, uh, on a non void legendary. But if you are in a spot where you're starting to really manage your shards, I don't know this weekend would be the time to YOLO. You're not double dipping with anything like for fragments for a legendary champion we're going after to, to get a little, like a champion chase or something done or a summon rush. And I don't think this champion is some like God tier game changing champion. But for anybody mid game, early game, go ahead, pull your uh, shards during 2x ancients because you still need to fill out lots of epics and legendaries. And during 2x shards is a perfect time to do that. Then as we dive into the stuff going on in game, we might as well cover some of the stuff real quick while we're here. So uh, the thing, there's going to be a couple different, uh, there's going to be a couple different like super raid, uh, artifact frenzy type events going on. They're going to have one for the undead horde accessories in the spider starting tomorrow. And then they're also going to have the dwarf accessories starting on September 3rd, the day after that. So if you need uh, different accessories from the spider for undead or dwarves, keep an eye on that in the next couple of days. But I think the one that is going to be really noteworthy to everybody is they're going to be doing 2x speed drops in the dragon and that's going to be happening on monday september 5th so uh definitely a good opportunity to get ready to slam some energy into the dragon and acquire a bunch of speed gear on your account when that is boosted up 2x here in a few days on monday and there was also some balance changes going on uh, that I want to give you my take on just really quick here to keep you uh, in the loop and, and give you some context as to some of these champions being changed. A lot of these uh, a lot of these old school legacy epics that were in the game when it launched are kind of falling behind because of the massive power creep that's happened over the last three years as they keep evolving the game and releasing stronger and stronger champions on average. So a lot of these old school epics are going to need to be adjusted a little bit to bring them up to speed. Marksman getting a little bit of a buff. I don't think it's going to be game changing for him, but uh, you know he's decent. There, there's already better options in the uh, in the high elves faction wars. You're going to want to build a royal guard, Tayrell, Virgis, Thenisil, Andrissia, Battle Sage, even champions like that. If you're going the route of building epics for faction wars or something, Marksman's getting a little bit of a bump to his speed. Uh, he's getting a different aura. He's getting like speed 20% in the arena, and his overall kit becomes a little bit more consistent. But all in all, I don't think it's anything to uh, to rush out and max this guy over or something like that. Cannon S also getting a little bit of adjustment and it's going to be pretty significant for faction wars, I think, for progression type of accounts. Because right now this stalwart guardian is placed 50% ally protection buff and 60% increased defense buff on the target for two turns. And then also, this is the part where that's getting changed, place continuous heal on this champion for one turn. That is going to instead be all allies. So we're going to place a 15% continuous heal on all allies. And this can be booked to a two turn cooldown. So going to be an insane amount of healing coming out. If you build her as like a high speed champion, cranking out a lot of turns. Which is why it's extra brutal that her base speed is 89, but they are also adjusting that. I believe they're taking it up to 98. Yeah, 89 to 98 on her base speed. So Cannon S will uh, all of a sudden be a decent option for, for a Faction Wars progression kind of team in the Sacred Order. Drake also getting a little bit of adjustment. Now he most notably gets built for the Wizardman epic uh, secret room in the Doom Tower. So he's a decent damage carry for that room. And now he's going to be a little bit better. They took his final blow ability and they made this if the target has less than 50% HP, the attack will always be critical fine that doesn't really change him as a champion but it's nice that that's a little bit more consistent now on this one here he's going to place a 30 percent decrease speed and a 50 percent decrease accuracy debuff on all enemies if this attack is critical they're removing the accept the target part and just making this all enemies but not only that they are also adjusting the book requirement to it's going to default at uh at five and it's going to book to four so He's basically awesome for that uh, that that epic room now. He's going to do the decrease speed, the decrease accuracy. He's going to hit stuff hard to finish it off. And he can be a damage carry for you with, with an ability like this here. Similar to Relic Keeper, Septimus like that, where if he gets a kill, the A1 is going to keep on going. So he went from like decent to that secret room to now pretty good. And I could even see him with some utility in faction wars as well with the uh, with the damage dealing and, and, and the same reason being that 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 decreased speed uh, for, for the entire team. It's really important to have that role on any team you're trying to do PvE content.
Delver getting a slight buff as well with the base speed going from 91 to 98. You can see a common theme here. Some of these speeds are just too archaic to be good in the relevant game. And we're getting the Mark for Death. They're changing this heal reduction to decrease defense, I believe. Uh, yeah, decrease defense. So we're going to attack one enemy. We're going to place a weaken for three turns if they already have defense down. So she could be a good option for boss fights in Faction Wars or something where you, you, you do have a defense down already like like with Madame Saris or something, but you don't have anybody placing weaken. Delver can hit decently hard and provide that role. And she's also getting a slight change to finisher. And the second part is going to be getting adjusted to remove this qualifier. So remove the, if the target has weaken. And now we are just going to have a 50% chance of placing a defense down for two turns before attacking. So I think Delver can be okay uh, as, like a, as like a progression damage dealer in Faction Wars or something. Rom is a fun, epic poison detonator option, and he is getting a little bit of adjustment. The uh, the A1 is going to be a lot more consistent. They're buffing up that base chance from 30 to 50 for placing poisons. And then on the Fits of Rage, they're removing that part where it says damage increases according to the amount of HP the champion has lost. And now they're just going to make the damage increase by 50% if he has more than 50% HP. So I think his kit makes a little bit more sense, and he'll be a little bit more consistent. But Karam is, is a way like a super niche special specialist in the game so not anything super significant so yeah for those rebalanced uh changes that came out like yesterday or something uh i, I don't see anything ridiculous like like a must build rush out and do it now type of a change but a lot of them got a little bit more caught up to speed to be relevant for some faction wars progression and stuff like that as we check the shop really quick i don't really see uh anything hyper noteworthy here so nothing to really cover there but yeah i wanted to get a video out talking about the summoning events coming up this weekend and the balance changes that came out yesterday i didn't get a chance to cover them yet on the channel so if you are going to be pulling shards this weekend during the double summoning events good luck i hope you get something great for your account and as always remember to subscribe on your way out if you enjoy daily raid shadow legends content i will see you soon in the next video thanks for watching peace